Okay. And we're recording. So, for this tutorial, I'm just going to take you through a bunch of weird shapes, making use of things like the shape builder tool, going over, you know, basically all the various tools that are in your cheat sheet, and I'll do my best to describe what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and you know, which shortcuts I'm using, which tools I'm grabbing as I grab them, things like that. So, I'm going to start by switching these colours around and actually getting rid of this fill, uh, this uh, stroke colour entirely. So, with stroke selected, I'm going to click this button right here. That makes my stroke fill, my stroke colour empty. And I'm going to grab a circle and I'm just going to start with a crescent moon. Nice and easy. Now, if you want to center your shape your uh, your shape on the artboard just look for that little prompt there grab it now press alt and shift because i want my circle to be you know perfectly circular i don't want an ellipse and with alt and shift selected you just drag and that sizes the circle evenly from the middle so there's my one circle now I'm going to press V to grab my object select tool. And I want to duplicate this, so easiest way to do that is to just hold Alt, click and drag. And I want to duplicate this horizontally to the right. So I just followed that guideline there, let my shape snap to it, and I have a second circle. Next thing I'm going to do is select both of these and press shift M to grab my shape builder which as you can see is this one here now if you have a look at the shape builder tool the icon on my screen it's got a little sub icon next to it right now that's a plus sign if I press alt that changes to a minus and what that does is that removes shapes so if I click and drag through there that gets rid of those shapes and easy done we have a crescent moon so let's grab that, put that off to the side because we're done with it. Okay, next thing I'm going to do now is more or less the same thing, except we're going to do a waxing moon instead. So one more time, starting at the center, shift alt, drag it out, then press V for your object select tool, which is the black arrow. And one more time, I'm going to duplicate this horizontally. So I'm going to hold down shift this time. Just so that I don't have to focus too hard on that guideline there. And I have another shape. So, with that done, once again, I still have my object select tool. I'm going to click and drag to select everything. Shift M to grab my shape builder. Now this time, what I want to do is just get rid of this outer crescent here and I did that again by pressing alt when I clicked on it that deleted it now for this one I want to actually make this thing its own shape now because it's currently overlapping the other black circle I want to show you something real quickly if I just grab this you can see it's just a random little lens shape and another in the circle that we started with so with the shape builder selected if I click on this it then becomes it's cut that shape out of this black circle so as you can see now that's a crescent so what I want to do now is I'm going to just move this a few pixels over and we have a waxing moon but one thing I want to try to do is see if I can somehow get this gap here to be nice and even. So I'll put that back where I got it from. And what I'll do instead is I will Hmm, how do I go about doing this? I think the easiest way 
might just be to grab this, duplicate that inwards until it matches. And then squash it a bit. Yep. Now, as you can see, when I grabbed it by this top handle here, if I press Alt again, it resizes that evenly. And there you go. So now, I'm going to grab all of those, press Shift M to get my shape builder, and delete this, this, and this, and then I'll make that one cohesive shape by clicking and dragging with the plus. Okay. And there we have a waxing moon. So grab all of that, control G to group it so that you can just click on anywhere in here and it's one shape. Put that over here because we're done with that. Okie dokie. Next thing I'm going to do is some kind of I don't know, weird diamond thing. I'll actually show you two methods to make a diamond. First one, starting with a square. Press V to grab your object select tool and with shift press down, we're gonna rotate this 45 degrees. That snaps to 45 degree increments doing it this way. Use it as a mouse pad. If I can hear your mouse smacking against the table through my headphones, the microphone, one hundred percent. Okay. Thank you. Or grab a piece of cardboard or something. Something soft. No, this is good. Okay, so we've got our square here. Now. A couple of ways we can go about doing this. If you want to make yourself just a plain old perfectly square diamond, that's all you have to do. But if you want something a little more stylized, then you may want to change some of these points here. So if you're going with something that isn't vertically symmetrical, it's as easy as getting your anchor select tool, which is A, it's the white arrow. Selecting an anchor point, make sure that it is selected. You can tell if you've selected one anchor as opposed to all of them by what color it is. So if you have a look, when I just click on the shape, all four anchors are blue. If I just click on one of them, you see that one is blue. These three are white. Now the blue one is the one that's selected. You need to pay attention to that. So if you don't necessarily want a vertically symmetrical diamond, you can just do it that way. So, I'll start with this for now. Press V for object select. Let's move this back. It's a bit bigger than I'd like it to be, so I'm going to shrink it down. Once again, I just did that by holding Shift and Alt, which resized it evenly from the center. Okay, now I'm also going to change the color of this because we're working with a couple of shapes this time around, so I'll make that one just this medium grey. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this to grab my ellipse tool. Now as you can see, if you have a look here, these already have shortcuts attached to them. So if you're using the ellipse or the rectangle often, you can see ellipse is L, rectangle is M. So if I just press L, I've got the ellipse tool. Now I want this one lined up with the center of my diamond. So my diamond. You all heard it. So I'm going to grab maybe here. Click Shift Alt and we have a circle. That's a bit higher than I'd like it to be so V for your object select tool. Click that, press Shift and pull it down. Alright, now I'll make that one black and I want this to be behind the diamond so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control open bracket. Now that's the open bracket next to the P key 
on your keyboard, not the open bracket that is a capital nine. So when you're talking about brackets, specifically in the context of sending things forward and backward on the artboard, it's the ones that are next to the P button. Okay, so I've got that there. Now what I want to do is cut that little wedge out of the circle there so that I have a bit of negative space around it. So how I'll do that is I'll select these, Shift M to grab my shape builder, and what I'll do is, you see how it's distinguishing between these two areas? Just pull that, that's now one shape. V for object select, click that because I still want it to be that medium grey, and if I grab my circle and pull it down, you can see there's now a wedge cut out of it. Looks a little bit like a quest pointer, I'm okay with that. Okay. Next thing that I'm going to do is just put a weird little swirl behind it, and this will give me an opportunity to fiddle around with the pen tool. Now I'm going to use the pen tool instead of the curve tool, because the curve tool it takes a little extra fiddling, and I'd rather just go for something that I can start from scratch with. So, anchor, click and drag to make it curve, click and drag for a curve, and just keep clicking and keep dragging. Now, the reason this business is happening right here is because, if you have a look, I have black fill and no stroke, and that's why that's happening. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, get rid of all that because I hate it, and go with the curve tool anyway, but you'll have the same problem happening. This is just, it's like a semi-automatic line tool. So if I start up here and just start putting down pointers, as you can see, the curve tool is sorting out those splines for me. Now, I want to turn back here, but it's going to be hard to do with that bendy bit in the way. You know, it's like trying to move a stiff wire. So what I'll do is I'll hover over this handle right here. You see how the icon changes? Double click on that, and it's gotten rid of that curve. So now I have a nice hard angle here. So, keep moving my way around. And as you can see, as I fill out the shape, it starts playing silly buggers a lot less. Get back up here. And once again, you want to look for that little sub icon there next to the main tool. You see how it turns to a circle? That means it wants to complete the path. So you do that, and then you've got your little that thing there. Double click, and you get through to that excess curve. So this is still not exactly how I want it to look, so what I'm going to do is fiddle around with it with my anchor select tool. So I pressed A to pick that up, and now if I, if I focus in on these anchors here, you can see they've got handles on them. So I can use this to refine the curve a little bit more, make it look more how I had it pictured in my head. And how I had it pictured was with a little more smoothness in the weight. Wanted it to feel a little bit more dynamic. You know, give it a little bit more natural movement. If you see what I mean. Now, I don't like what that did, so what I think I'll do instead, actually, is shrink that down a little bit, move this in, and I think this needs a bit of a tilt. There you go. It helps to think of these, the anchor points, are always at the crest of a curve. And then these handles are the seesaw that inform how the curve moves. 
All right, so and the length of the curve depends on the length of the handle. So if you have a short handle, you know the curve is barely there. But if you have a long handle, then the curve has a lot more influence on the rest of the shape. Alrighty, so... That'll do for now, I think. So I'm going to grab my object select tool again, press V. You know, move that to more or less where I want it. I'm going to make that one a lighter grey. Now, I want that behind everything here, so to send that to the very back, I press Control shift close bracket. No, close bracket is front, open bracket is back. My bad. Okay, so that's that done. One more time, grab everything, Control g to group it, and let's put that off to the side, because we're done with it. Okay. Next up, I'm going to show you how to make a vertically symmetrical diamond without having to fiddle fart around and constantly guess and peep the pixels, making sure that the square that you're pulling on is even on both sides. So, to start, we're going to grab the star tool, click anywhere on the canvas just once, and you'll get this little dialog box here. You want it to have three points, because what's a three-pointed star? A triangle. Now, as you can see, this one has little extra anchor points. These are going to get in the way, so press hyphen or minus, and that will give you your delete anchor. Click, click, click. Those anchors are gone now. No more anchors. Goodbye. Ships are sailing. Okay, so let's grab our object select tool. What we'll do now is... Basically decide how skinny you want your diamond to be. Now because you started with a triangle, you're not having the same problem that you would have with a rectangle where rotating it just gives you a wonky bounding box. So if you wanted to try and make this one yeah, you see, you see what's happening there? I'm pressing Alt, I'm trying to make it skinny, but all it's doing is turning it into various kinds of rectangle. So, let's get rid of that one. Grab this triangle again. Now, I want to duplicate this one exactly where it is. So, if I just press Control c Control v you see how it's just, it's offset, it's renegade on the artboard anywhere it wants to be. So, instead, I'm going to press Control shift v and you can't see what's happened there, but it's pasted it directly in place. Exactly where it was. So, what I'm going to do then is... See this one over here? That's Transform. If you can't find that on your workspace, go to Window. Go down. It's all alphabetical until you find Transform. So, with that one open, I'm going to select this menu here. And I'm going to say Flip Vertical. Now I have some kind of weird hourglass. But what I'm going to do now is move this up until it aligns. You see how it wants to intersect? Let it do that. Grab both of these. Zoom in, make sure they're touching. I think it's safe to say that they are. Alright then, Shift M for your shape builder. You've made a diamond. Congratulations. Easy done. And if you wanted to make it thinner or thicker, taller or shorter, press V, object select, grab a side, press Alt, and you can change how you want that to look. There you go. So, that one's done. I'm going to put this over here. Okay. Now I'm going to have a go at making a heart. Now let's change the color to pink. Oh, you see how that turned pink? Here's a quick tip. Undo that. Make sure that whatever you're changing the color of is selected before you change the color. So, if I've got nothing selected and I click that, 
nothing's changed color. But if I have this selected and say I want to make a new shape, if you look closely, you can see a little bit of a blue box around that. So then if I want to preemptively change the color of my shape, whoops, because that was still selected. So undo that, object, click away. And instead, if I press L for my ellipse tool, now I have nothing selected. I can preemptively, preemptively rather, grab that. So once again, I'm just gonna make a random ellipse. Now I'm starting with the straight line heart method, just a real simple emoji style thing. So I've got my object tool, my object select, alt click, duplicate to the side. So we have a bottom or some breasts, whatever you like. Shift M for your shape builder, make that one shape by clicking and dragging across both. V, click away. So now we have one shape. Now, with that star tool again, let's make another three-pointed one and hit V to grab the whole thing and resize it evenly from the middle by pressing shift and alt. Now, I'm gonna, I've lined this up as best I can. I don't like how tall it is though, so I'm gonna shorten that a bit, move it down, yeah, a little bit more. Now, don't worry so much if you've got pointy bits sticking out for now, because you can fix that with the shape builder. Select both of these, shift M. Now with alt held down, I'm going to delete that, delete that, and make this one shape. Okay, V, click away. Now as you can see, I've got some randoms here. So I'm gonna put that back where it was grab that whole thing see if I can find those little renegades and then with my shape builder again yep add that one there and um, just covering all my bases here sorry I got real close to the microphone then because I was peeping at my screen all right and we have a little straight edged heart. So, object, click away, no more renegades, there we go. Easy done. Let's put this off to the side and make another one, this time with a bit of curve in it. A little bit of curve in the tail, a proper actual Valentine's heart. So, press L to grab your ellipse tool, one more time, make a circle, press V, shift, or actually probably start with alt, just so that Illust Illustrator doesn't, you know, chuck a spacky. Alt, shift, or don't, you know, whatever you like. Alt, click, shift, I guess. Duplicate to the side. There we go. A little further over, I think. Yeah, there we go. Now, I think I might have a go at making this one a little bit taller so first thing that I'll do is that now shift M for shape builder make that one shape and then right click star tool start in the middle three-sided polygon there we go
Okay, so press V for your object select. Now, make that one about that size. Make it a bit more squat. Now you'll notice this time around, and last time as well, I didn't bother deleting the excess anchor points. And you'll see why in a minute. So, got that there. Now I might actually pull this up a little bit higher, just to give myself plenty of wiggle room. Hmm. There we go, that'll do. Now, with that how it is, what I'm going to do is get my direct select tool, and what I'll actually do so that both of these sides stay even is I'll grab this point here and I'll bring it down. Now, because of these anchor points, it's giving me that particular shape. That's a bit too far, so let's try this one. Now, you see this little circle here? You get that wherever you have a hard corner. So, if I click on that and drag it outwards, as you can see, it's made a curve. It's not a great one. Let's see if we can make that any better. Now, hmm. so let's grab that. Now I'm going to use the shift key and my arrow and do some counting. One, two, eh, one should be enough. Grab that, shift in, one, and we have it even on both sides. Now, let's see. That looks a bit better. I wonder how far out I can drag that. Pretty far. I'm going to undo that though, because if I have both of these anchor points selected with the shift tool, what I can then do is grab that, and as you can see, it's doing both at the same time. So there we go. That happened. Now, if I press V for my object, click away so I can see how it looks. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's also not even. So, I'm going to grab both of these, and if I have a look, align to selection. These buttons up here will align your shapes. There we go, that straightened them out properly. Now what I'm going to do is grab this and squash it down a little bit until it lines up with that heart shape. There we go, that should do it. Okay, so, grab these, shift M, shape select, cut off the tags, and then, now that should have done away with any of the weird wayward bits, but just to be on the safe side, let's do this a few more times. Press V. Click away. Looks alright. Kinda weird. Now, if it's looking kinda weird, I kinda wanna fix up this curve here, so what I'll do is I'll get my A tool. What have I got going on over here? And over here as well. So, with both of those selected now, if I... Hmm. Nope. Okay, note to self. That does exactly the same thing as with your object select tool. Pressing Alt, I mean. So. 
let's try pulling that and pulling this still kind of weird I might just have to be okay with it yep this is an unfortunate side effect of using the shape builder in that you end up with a bunch of weird anchor points but one thing that you can do is get one side looking the way you want it to that's a little bit better and then What I'm going to do now is grab this one here, my line segment tool, also known as forward slash. Let it snap to an anchor, this one up here right in the middle, and hold shift so that I have a nice vertical line. Now I'm going to go shift M, grab my shape builder, no, I'm going to hit V, select all of that. Shift M for my shape builder. And what I'm going to do now is delete this and this. Press V, click away. Now it's still seeing a wayward path there, so just pull that away, delete the whole thing. Then I'll grab this. Control Shift V. Nope. <laughs> Copy first. Control shift v to duplicate in place and then you can see my transform window is still open flip horizontal move that over let it intersect that's looking much better select all shift m shape builder make it one shape and there we go so keep that one in mind if the shape you made is kind of screwy, just tidy up one side, getting it looking the way you want to, then cut it in half, flip it, glue it back together. Okay, so now what we're going to do is fiddle around with the shape builder and some of these shapes that we've already made. So grab the heart, duplicate onto your artboard with alt and drag grab a handle shift alt to make it bigger from the middle now next thing that we're going to do is one more time drag that one down now what I want to do and here's a um, handy shortcut right click on a shape transform reflect vertical or horizontal pay attention to this bit up here because uh, these are actually different to the ones in there so I'm actually going to delete this entire bit of recording so never mind that have that selected in your transform window menu flip vertical alright so what I'm going to do now is line those two up now I actually want them a little far away from each other maybe like that there we go now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press L to get my ellipse tool and I'm gonna make this a gray now I could what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line it up with the middle right here now I know that these hearts are in line but I want all of these to be evenly distributed so, first thing I'm going to do is send this circle to the back. So, Control Shift, open bracket. And then I'm going to select all of these, and that brings up my alignment options up here. Just double checking again that it's aligned to selection, because I want these to be distributed mm -hmm. relative to each other, not the artboard. So, if I grab this button here, vertical distribute center. 
you can see that then lines them up nicely. So, what I'm going to do next is grab this circle, control C, control shift V to duplicate it in place, make that bigger. Now I'm going to make this a different color again. And then I'm going to do that exact same thing, control duplicate that shape in place, and I'll make that one white, or I guess lighter gray, and then make that smaller, because what I'm trying to build here is a little border. So I'll select both of those and send both of them all the way to the back, and you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here. So now that I've got those sorted out, what I'm going to do next is select everything here and I'm going to press Shift M to grab my shape builder, drag all that across, drag all that across, and what that's done is it has cut those heart shapes out of these three circles. And then if I press Alt and hit that, hit that, I have now deleted what was in the middle here. So, I have a look, I click here, and there is nothing. I'm going to make those black. Alright, so, that's what we've got going on there. Next thing that I want to do is add a bit of negative space around here, and I can do that by grabbing this, Control C, Control Shift V, to duplicate that in place, make that bigger, but as you can see, one of the problems that we have with resizing curved shapes is that you tend to get a little bit of phrasing happening, it's not perfectly even all the way around the border, so you might have to fiddle with the aspect ratio a bit. Now I also want this behind the first black heart so that I can keep an eye on what I'm doing. So control, open bracket, without shift, just to send it backwards a few times. And I'm also going to zoom in so that I can peep those pixels a little bit better. Now it looks like I need to pull this down, or make it taller. I'm going to try pulling it down first. Yep, that seems to have evened up some of my curves particularly as they apply to these bits here. The next thing that I might do is actually grab my Direct Select tool and click this anchor right here. Oh, hello. Would you look at that? Looks like I have two anchors. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll just grab those three, double check that I haven't clicked any other ones, nope, those are white. So, with those selected, I'm going to use my up arrow to just fix up that border right there, and that'll do. I think that would about cover it for me if I had any more designs on this area up here, but really, the only thing I'm interested in is just getting some negative space in these areas. So, I'm going to grab that anchor point right there. It does nothing because there's too many anchor points here, so zoom in, grab this one, and that one, and that one, and probably also these two. Zoom back out. Move these down a bit. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay, now that I've fixed up the shape, I'm going to use my Object Select tool to make this whole thing just a little bit smaller because that border is just a bit too thick for my liking. I'm also going to adjust the width because, once again, resizing it changed the aspect ratio that I need. For more complex shapes, you'll find it's a lot of fiddling. OK, 
Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll grab that, duplicate in place, Control shift v to paste in place. Remember to copy it first, otherwise you're just pasting the last thing that was on the clipboard. And I'll flip that one vertically and move it down until it's centered with the other shapes. There you go. Send it back a few times, just need to be back once. And then straighten it out until the border is even. There we go. Okay. I'm going to send that back again so that it's behind the other black heart. Then, select everything. Shift M. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make these one cohesive shape first because, nope, that was incorrect. If I join all of these together so that this is one shape, then that will make deleting the whole thing later a lot easier. It saves me a lot of clicks. So, press V, click away. Now, if you actually had a close look with everything selected, can you see that there's still some extra paths in here? Fix that up, Shift M. Just join those shapes together. Okay, click away. Grab everything, Control G to group it. It's now one shape. Now, if you want to get in here later and fix up any of those individual shapes, one way to do it is with the direct select tool. But, you know, that takes a bit of finagling. Another way that you can do it is if you double click, that will isolate this shape. All right, and then you can then make changes to the whole thing as a group, double click out. That's still a group but you've just edited it, so I'm going to put that back the way I had it because that's how I want it. Click out to exit isolation mode, grab this, put it to the side because we're done with that. Okay, now for something a little more applicable and also probably a little less complex I'm going to make a convex diamond. You could probably also call it a spark. Okay, and I'm going to do that by starting with some ellipses. Now, I'm actually going to use strokes this time just to make it easier to see what I'm doing. And I think I'll make these strokes blue. Okie dokie. So, Let's start with one random ellipse and with my V tool. Now because this is empty, you, you can't click in the middle of it because there's nothing there. So if you want to move this when it has no fill, you have to move it by the path. Okay, so Alt, move it across, maybe about here. And this area right here is going to be the top of my diamond. Okay, so let's grab both of these, Alt, move those down in a straight line, and there is my diamond in the middle. Now I could just leave it at that, you know, use the shape tool to get rid of the excess, but I want this to be a hollow diamond with an even border and empty space in the middle. So, what I'm going to do, as you saw with the hearts, it's a lot of screwy nonsense to try and get those borders even if you're just resizing. So, instead, I'm going to take these same ellipses, and I'm going to duplicate this 45 degrees until I get the width of the border that I want. And I'm going to do the same with this one. 
hold shift, it'll let you move it 45 degrees in a straight line, and I'm going to move it 45 degrees until it tells me that I have intersected with the one next to it, okay? Might have some trouble doing that, so to make that easier, what you can do is view rulers show rulers and what that's going to help me with is you see where these two ones overlap here I'm going to put one ruler here on the intersect and then I'm going to do the same up here and hopefully yep now I can line up this area right here with the ruler get a nice even border now if I do that the same on this side yep line it up with the ruler where it intersects with the other curve And then one more time with this one. But with the last one, you can just let it intersect with the other two. Much easier. Now we have some magician's hoops, but you can see the shape I'm trying to make in the middle of them right here. So grab all of these, Shift M, and make your shape. Now, if I press Alt, I can then get rid of all these, and all these, and all these, and all that, and all this, and this, and this, and just bugger it all off. Goodbye. And goodbye. And there we are. Press V, and we have a convex diamond with an even border and empty space in the middle. So then, bang. Cool beans. I can put that one off to the side now. Alrighty. Next thing that I'm going to do, and actually last thing for this tutorial, is I'm going to have some fun with stacking lines. You may have noticed down here in appearances, we have stroke, and we have fill. We're going to be working in here for this one. Okay. The next thing that I want to, yeah, I want to get rid of these first. I said I want to get rid of these first. There we go. Bye bye. There we go. Okay. So let's grab our ellipse, and we'll start with just a black line. We won't need any fills this time around. We'll start with this, I'm using perfect circles, and I want that to have a nice thick line, let's go with five points, okay, grab our object select, now I want to move that 45 degrees in a straight line, and I can do that by using shift, if you don't want it to intersect with any of these, just see them in a little bit further. There you go. Okay, so I actually want to line the middle of that one up, make that smaller, not that much smaller. There we go. All right, now let's duplicate that one in a 45 degree straight line again, put that there, make that smaller. There we are. And I like the size of this one, and I want another one of them all the way up here. Okay. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to press forward slash. No. Oh, <laughs> my mistake. Line segment is backslash. That's what happened. 
backslash is underneath backspace. Okay, so we're going to find the center of this big one here. Shift Alt, drag it at a 45 degree angle, and as you can see, it's giving me a nice even line from the center of that circle. And hopefully I'll get a balanced design out of that. If not, fiddle around with it. But that's not why we're here right now. So, what I want to do now is I want to make it look like this diagonal line is weaving in and out of each curve of these circles. So, I'm going to select everything, and in my appearance window, again, if you can't find this, window, appearance. These are all in alphabetical order, so as long as you know the name of what you're looking for, it should be easy to find. Okay, and I'm going to hit this button down the bottom here, bottom left, add new stroke. These act like any other layer, so the one underneath, I'm going to make that nine points, and I'm going to change that to white. See what's happened? Okay, so this line, I want it to be going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm going to make that work with the scissors tool. So press C to grab your scissors. That's these ones over here. And with the scissors, you can clip a path. So let's zoom in. This one stays going over. I like that where it is. Snip. Snip. Now, V. See, it's got that little segment there. And you all remember how to bring something to the very front. Control, shift, closed bracket. And now it's going under that one. So, over this curve, which means I want it under this curve. So, C to grab your scissors, snip, snip, V for object select, control shift, closed bracket to bring it to the front. Now it's going under that curve. Over this curve, that can stay as it is. Under this curve, C to grab the scissors, snip, snip, V. Now let's grab that one, but I don't want to grab that one, I want to grab this one. Okay, bring it to the front, control shift, close bracket. Whoops, I just zoomed all the way in. Okay. It's going over that curve. I like it there. Grab the scissors. Snip, snip. Take that. Bring it to the front. And now, we have some kind of weird sort of postmodern cosmic Celtic knotwork thing going on here. But yeah. And that's how you can do all kinds of fun stuff with your strokes. Now, let's say that I wanted this to have a gradient instead of a plain color. Well, first of all, I'd have to select it. We've been over this one a few times and I still managed to forget. Go to your gradient, just click that, Make sure your stroke is selected. Boom. That's looking kind of weird though. But if I click this little button right here, apply gradient across stroke, suddenly it has volume. Now, what if I wanted, for example, that blue gradient to have a black outline to give it a little more, you know, graphical flair? Well, there is no real limit to how many times you can stack strokes. So, Change this to 7, for example, make that black, and why can't I see it? Oh, once again, because I didn't have the thing selected. <laughs> so, ah, there we are. It's red. I was trying to choose black. Select the thing. There we are. 
Now, as you can see, it kind of doesn't come around the end here. So, what you can do to fix that is make sure you have the right stroke selected, by the way. Up here, it shows you what kind of cap. So, round cap, maybe. Mm, no, possibly not. Uh, projecting cap, once again, possibly not. So, what you, what you can do instead, you see what's happening here with the circles? That's because I selected everything. Now, I just snipped the circles. This, this here is still one contiguous path. Okay, so what I'll do instead is I will give this a round cap, uh, but then that blue kind of cuts off, so I'll grab this as well and give that a round cap. And look what's happened. We have a brooch. Awesome. So, grab all of that, grip it up, it's now one shape. We're done with it. Oop. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, there's a thing in preferences that stops that, but I've disabled it because of reasons. Anyway. So. Those are all of your shapes. And now you can come back to this anytime you need to for a bit of a refresher. Hopefully this has given you a few extra tips and tricks and pointers and, you know, things that you'll be able to apply in other areas of your work. Um, let me know if you'd like to see anything else for the next recording. I might do a few of these. So, yeah, uh, that's all for this one. Um, good luck, have fun, check you next time.